Jesus, this suit is hot. Doshin the Giant is one of the hardest GameCube games to get hold of nowadays. Even I, curator of all things nostalgic and obscure, had to settle for this artist's interpretation to disguise the fact I played it on an emulator. But seriously, you'd be lucky to get hold of a copy for less than 50 quid, demonstrating how collectible and sought after it is. But ask anyone what they think of Doshin, and 99 times out of 100, they probably won't have a clue what you're talking about. So why does this game have such a cult following that persists to this day? Watch on to find out. Hey, how's it going guys? This is Tom from UDS and welcome to Nostalgia Obscura. Our series where we take a look at the hidden gems from gaming's past and find out why they're worth a second look. If you're new to the channel, then you can expect plenty more on retro classics, as well as reviews of modern releases and my own personal audiovisual shrine to all things Star Wars. So if this sounds like something you'd enjoy, then please do subscribe. By the time this video drops, we're either just about to hit 1000 subs, have just hit 1000 subs, or we've hit 1000 subs and have since dropped back down again. And if it's the last one, then it's extra important that you subscribe, because it's probably made me cry in the corner somewhere. And you don't want to see a grown man cry, do you? Do you? Anyway, on with the show. Doshin the Giant started life on the Nintendo 64 DD, and honestly, that alone warrants its place on this list. The ill-fated disc add-on for the N64 was an absolute flop, only sold in Japan, and even then, only by mail order. And even in the mid-90s, that was not convenient. With the PlayStation dominating CD gaming, and cartridges still giving Nintendo respectable sales, the 64DD felt more like an experiment than anything, with only 9 games released for the hardware before efforts would turn to Project Dolphin. This was the working title for Nintendo's new gaming machine, their new cube-like gaming machine. I think they called it something like the Playbox or something, I can't remember. But back to the 64DD. One of the nine games released for it was indeed Doshin the Giant, all the way back in 1999. As such, it started life locked to Japan, but international audiences would get glimpses of this peculiar game through screenshots in magazines such as Nintendo Power. That's why there was definite buzz when it was announced that Doshin the Giant would be remastered for the Playbox in 2002, now including a European release. Wait, what? What? They went with GameCube? Really? I don't see it personally. Now that's a brief history of what led to Doshin, but what is it all about? Well, to answer that, we first need to take a look at some giants. To say that giants are complicated creatures is an understatement. I mean, you have the big friendly giant and the iron giant who are friendly, nurturing beings, and even a Hagrid kind of fits in the category. I say kind of because he's only half giant, but that's a whole different thing. Let's not get into that now. However, in mythology, most of the giants are evil beings, with Goliath and the Japanese Oni fitting that description pretty well. I mean, Oni are basically demons who are said to exist to spread misery, and they also apparently keen on eating human flesh. So yeah, being big doesn't necessarily mean you're friendly. But what makes Doshin the Giant great is that you get to choose which path you go down. You can be that nurturing figure for your villagers, or you can become Jashin, something akin to the demon giants in Japanese mythology. Except you can't feed on the flesh of your villagers. Unsurprisingly, I think that would have been a tad unsuitable for the game's 3 plus rating. Good versus evil, it's just the age old choice. You can still progress by choosing the dark side instead of the light, just like in Star Wars. Only there's no lightsaber battles, the game's set on a tropical island, and Doshin seems to be one of the very few things that's avoided the claws of Disney. But speaking of Star Wars, we do actually have a series on the best Star Wars video games ever, and it's hosted by yours truly, so if that's your sort of thing, then you can find the link in the description below, cause I am a shameless self promoter. Your villagers are entirely dependent on you to provide them with resources and basically build their lives for them. The game ends when your villagers build you a monument dedicated to everything you've done for them. They build it out of adoration and love for you, and honestly, this must have been when my 10 year old self turned into the egotist I am today. I'm actually not sure how it ends if you choose the dark side. I like to think it never does, and you just wage a war against your poor villagers until your GameCube melts. 
With that being said, Doshin the Giant, it's got its issues, one of which being its short game time, but honestly, its charm is undeniable, and it was one of the earlier games to play on the whole good versus evil dilemma, way before it became a staple with games like Mass Effect, Fable, Infamous, and of course, Red Dead Redemption. But why did a game that was universally celebrated and so influential fall into obscurity? Well, that's largely down to its development company, Param. The studio only ever made Doshin, as well as its even more obscure add-on, which to this day only released on the 64DD. They then just shut up shop for good. Despite selling pretty well, it just wasn't enough for Nintendo to consider a sequel from a new studio. And so Doshin quietly fell away from mainstream public consciousness. Of the three developers who are listed on the company's Wikipedia page, only one of them went on to continue to work for Nintendo, Katsutoshi Lida, who contributed to some WiiWare titles a few years later. He's now a professor of film at Kyoto's Ritsumeikan University. In a 2017 interview with the fine folk at Toko Toko TV, he talks about working on Doshin, and how he treated it like a work of art as much as he did a game, and once you view it through this lens, it's impossible to see it any other way. It might sound pretentious, but you don't really play the game, you experience it. It's a soothing, meditative journey that tackles themes of environmentalism, morality and power, all the while never feeling preachy. I'll leave you with some words of advice from Doshin's compatriot, the BFG. Two rights don't equal a left. So that was Doshin the Giant. Did you play it back in the day? Would you like to see a re-release on the Switch? Please let me know the answer to everything in the comments below, because I would genuinely love to read your thoughts. And of course, don't forget to subscribe, because when you're a small channel, every interaction helps. And hey, maybe you'll even enjoy what you see. Anyway, my name's been Tom, this has been Nostalgia Obscura, we've been UDS, and thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.